All right, let's talk about projectors. So let's suppose we have a non-zero projector. We want to show that two norm is greater than or equal to one with the equality if and only if it's an orthogonal projector. So we know that a projector satisfies P squared equals P. That's what it means to be a projector. And so the two norm of P is the two norm of P squared, which just by the standard um, inequality, the when it comes to um, matrices, the um, the two norm of a product of matrices is less than or equal to um, the product of the norms of the matrices, and it's actually the it this is there's a more general theorem that's um, let's see here. I think this is just an instance of Holder's inequality, which applies to um, linear operators in general. But if we're working in finite dimensional vector spaces, then that's the same thing as a matrix. So anyways, so we have this inequality. So that's, that's that. That's all we have to do. Um, P is non-zero. So, or rather, so this, I guess, is since P is non-zero. Um, the two norm of P must be strictly greater than zero, and so we could just cancel out um, a factor of no, of two norm of P here, and we get uh, two norm of P is greater than or equal to one, which is what we want. And now the tricky part is to prove that um, the norm is one if and only if P is orthogonal. So for one direction, we're going to suppose that P is an orthogonal projector. Um, if you look in the textbook and look at theorem 6.1, part of that proof involves finding the singular value decomposition of a projector P. And let's see here. So in that proof, we discover that all non-zero singular values of any projector P are 1. So the, the, the singular values of a projector, you've got a bunch of 1s and a bunch of zeros. Um, in this case, P is non-zero, so P has at least one non-singular, one non-zero singular value, and so the largest singular value of P is therefore one. And we know that the largest singular value of a matrix is the same as the two norm of the matrix, and so the two norm of P is precisely one. So conversely, what we want to show is we want to show that. Um, so what we just showed is that if P is orthogonal, then the two norm of P is one. Now we want to suppose, what we want to prove is we want to prove that if the two norm of P is one, then P is in an orthogonal projector. But we're actually going to prove the contrapositive of the statement, which is that if P is not an orthogonal projector, then the two norm of P is not greater than or equal to one or no, the, the two norm of P is not equal to one. And so in this case, we'll end up proving that um, f we know that the two norm of P has to be greater than or equal to one. And if we're going to prove that the two norm of P is not equal to one, um, it suffices to prove that the two norm of P is strictly greater than one. Okay, so suppose that P is a projection, is a projector which is not orthogonal. So an orthogonal projector is a projector in which the range and null space of the projector are orthogonal. So if we assume that P is not an orthogonal projector, then there exists a vector U in its range and V in its null space such that the inner product of these two, um, such, such that U is not perpendicular to V i.e. the inner product of u and v is non-zero. Now since u is in the range of p, p u must equal u, and since v is in the null space, p v is zero. Okay, so that'll be useful later. But next, I claim that there is some scalar such that u plus alpha v, the two norm of this, is strictly less than the two norm of u. Okay, so what what's sort of going on here? So Let's draw a picture. So we've got this vector u here, and we've also got a vector, let's call it v, over here. 
Now this angle that's formed between u and v cannot be 90 degrees. So if we sort of look at this, this line up here which I've drawn, which is all things of the form u plus um, beta v, um, because basically what this is, is this is just you, you go in the direction of u and then you just move in some scalar direction um, along here, some scalar um, v. So, of course, this angle here by similar triangle or by similar, ang or whatever, by like um, high school geometry, these two angles are the same. And so v, this, this line down here is parallel with this line up here, even though it doesn't quite look like that. But anyways, since these are not, since this angle here is not 90, deg 90 degrees, you can sort of see that if you were to move over to mo move over this way a little bit and draw a vector like here, then you'd have a, you'd end up with a vector whose norm is less than the norm of u. So it makes sense that we would be able to find such a vector, um, such a scalar alpha, such that u plus alpha v is strictly less than u. But let's actually figure out how we're going to do it. So first of all, um, I actually, so I sort of solved this backwards. I found an alpha that works. Um, if you let alpha be the, you take the inner product of u and v, you take the, um, the, you take the conjugate of it, the negative of that, and then you divide by the norm of v, um, or the norm squared of v, I guess, since this is the inner product of v which, with itself then what happens if you take this inner product, u plus alpha v star v, then we write this out. Um, when we take the con complex conjugate of this, um, uh, conjugate transpose of a sum is the sum of the conj conjugate transposes, and so we end up with u star v plus, uh, or this would be u star plus this thing star times v, and then when we multiply v through, we get u star v, and here we get conjugate of this conjugate, and then we end up with v star v, and then here we have u star v, and here the two complex conjugates cancel out, and then we have um, the v star v's will cancel out, and we're left with minus u star v, and so this is zero. So if the inner product of these two things is zero, then they're orthogonal. So in particular, if you multiply this v over here by some scalar, and here we're multiplying it by minus alpha, then these two things will still be perpendicular, because if you were to just um, include a, a, a scalar factor of minus alpha here, you'd just pull that scalar out front, and you'd have, over here, you'd have minus alpha times the quantity u star v minus u star v, which is minus alpha times zero, which is zero. So um, that makes sense that those are orthogonal as well. And now the vectors u, u plus alpha v and minus alpha v then form a right triangle in which the right angle lies adjacent to these two um, sides. So let's draw out what that looks like. So what that looks like here is if this is u, this is v, this is u plus beta v. We end up with the vector u plus alpha v, which is perpendicular to v. So what we do is we sort of... Um, the way that I imagine this is I, or the way that I came up with this, is I drew this, this um, parallel line here, uh, this, this line which is equal to the span of V, then I imagine what if I took a, um, what if I found a, an orthogonal vector? Um, so find some vector which is orthogonal to V, and then sort of figure out what this point is here and figure out what this vector is. And so it makes sense that you should be able to sort of take u and move along this u plus beta v line, this line which is things of the form u plus beta v, and end up with something and, and somehow intersect here with this vector which um, is perpendicular to v. And so what we end up with is this vector is, this is u minus alpha v, no, this is u plus alpha v, and then this vector going from u to 
to u plus alpha b, v, this is going to be alpha v, and so if it's pointing in the opposite direction, i.e. the other way, then, it, then it's the same thing as, um, then it would be minus alpha v. Let's see here. Right, because that's u plus alpha v, and alpha v will go from there to there. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, this is what the triangle looks like. So I guess that we can, um, so I guess, I, I don't think we need this minus here. Right, because let, let's, let's think about this. Um, this alpha v, if we were to bring it down, it would be like over here somewhere. This is alpha v, if we're starting at the origin there. And this is still perpendicular to u plus alpha v. And so, yeah, I don't know why I had that minus sign in there. Um, but in any case, so these two things are perpendicular. And yeah, so... So we have this triangle here, and because u plus alpha v is perpendicular to alpha v, this angle must be a right angle. And so then, this must be a right triangle, and we see that u is on the hypotenuse. And so therefore, the length of u must be... Oh, I have this backwards. This should be... Thus u is the hypotenuse of this triangle, and therefore, the two norm of u is strictly greater than this norm. I don't know why I had that backwards. Um, but in any case, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm just confusing myself because I have this written in like a different order here than I have up here. Um, but this, this works. This is, this is good. Um, and also note that we needed orthogonality here because if we imagine like if u and v were, um, so if this is v and this is u, then if we go perpendicular, if, if we go forward v, if we go up to u and go and add a scalar multiple of v, we'll end up with vectors along this line. And then if we form, if we like take this angle and, and we go here and we form a triangle here, then the hypotenuse, so this, this will be um, u plus alpha v. No, 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 no. This will be, this will be alpha, well, let's see here. Let's use a different letter, gamma. This will be gamma v. And this vector, so going from, going from this point to this point is gamma v. And then going from the origin up to here, this is going to be u plus gamma v. So we see in this scenario, u plus gamma v is always going to be the hypotenuse because u and u and gamma v are always orthogonal because u and v are orthogonal. And this will be true no matter what scalar gamma we choose. And so in this scenario, there's we can't get closer to the origin by choosing a different scalar. Whereas in this case, we are able to get closer to the origin by sort of what we're doing here is, um, yeah, we're, we're sort of making, getting ourselves to lie on the, um, on a line which is perpendicular to V. But anyway, so, so, so yeah, in, in any case, um, intuition and geometric arguments aside, we have proven that we have this inequality and then we can estimate everything from there. So we have the two norm is, well, the two norm is the supremum of all, so the two norm of P is equal to the supremum of the two norm of PX, where X ranges over all um, vectors of norm two. And so in particular, that's going to be greater than or equal to the two norm of P times this particular vector which has norm, let's see here, I think I meant to say norm one. Well, I did meant to mean to say norm one, I think I said something else instead. But yeah, so this is greater than or equal to p times this vector, which just looking at this, you can see that this is gonna have norm one. 
and then well we can pull the scalar outside because the, this p this this denominator here is just a scalar so we can pull it outside and we can algebraically reduce this to this using the linearity of p so p u plus alpha p v over this thing and the the denominator stays but p u is equal to u and p v equals zero so this numerator just becomes the two norm of u and because the two norm of u is strictly greater than this thing if you take one over, if you like divide both sides of this inequality by one, you flip, you reverse the inequality. And so the two norm of this thing, the two norm of this denominator is less than the two norm of this denominator. And so the two norm of one over this denominator is greater than the two norm of one over this denominator. And here we have one. So we have two norm of P is strictly greater than one. Therefore, if p is not orthogonal, then the two norm of p is strictly greater than one. Contrapositively, if it's not the case that two norm of p is greater than one, i.e. if the two norm of p, there should be a two here, if the two norm of p is less than or equal to one, then p is orthogonal. Okay? And so now, from here, we already know that the two norm of p must be greater than or equal to one for any projector, and so Saying that the two norm of p is less than or equal to one, it implies p is orthogonal. That's equivalent to saying the two norm of p is one implies that p is orthogonal. And hence, we've proven both directions, and so the two norm of p equals one if and only if p is an orthogonal projector. Well, given that p is an ortho given that p is a projector, the two norm of p equals one if and only if p is orthogonal and this completes the exercise.